What's going on everybody? Welcome back to your favorite YouTube channel. I apologize, I've been gone for a few weeks. I've been, uh, I was really self-conscious for a while when I launched this channel. I've been filming the videos off my phone and I didn't have all the uh, best content and tools that I needed to really push out the best product uh, I possibly could. So I kind of got a little, a little weary about doing videos for a while there and then I got super busy but I think that you know the time has passed and I've kind of gotten over that and I've decided to go forward with this channel as you may have noticed I changed the channel name from King Lister to King Lister TV that is King Lister TV the brand new name for the channel and my goal is still to upload and give you guys as much content as possible and tonight is a brand new start of something. It's called Troy's Thursday Talks. Now, for those who know me, Troy's Thursday Talks is a segment that I used to do on Facebook Live. Uh, every so often, I would go live and I would, you know, post these videos where I would talk about certain topics depending on what they were. It could be sports related. It could be movies. It could be uh, political related. A lot of different topics that... I thought would interest people and I would just go live and it turned out to be a pretty uh, successful thing a lot of people enjoyed listening to me talk a lot of people enjoyed to hear my hear my thoughts and opinions you know when I started this channel uh, it was about having fun I wanted to get out content I wanted to make people laugh I wanted to give you guys you know my thoughts and opinions on TV shows movies etc but I've been thinking about it and I, I want to do more and Bringing back Troy's Thursday Talks was important for me because it gives me a platform. Well, YouTube gives me a platform to really give you guys my unfiltered thoughts on certain situations. And Troy's Thursday Talks is going to be more of a podcast style listen. Whereas it would be a little bit longer than the, you know, the Troy's Top 5, which are quick you know little seven eight nine minute long videos depending on the topic whereas these will stretch a little longer i do plan on actually launching a podcast uh, eventually I, I actually downloaded the uh, a podcast app earlier i was playing around with it on my phone after i got home from work and it, it's it's pretty uh detailed and complex you know obviously to make a a, a good listen for a podcast so that is down the pipeline that will that will uh, hopefully, I, I want to launch that sometime. Once I play around with it a little bit and learn how to really work it, I will start a podcast. Uh, it'll be a weekly podcast. It'll probably be entitled Choice Thursday Talks. What I'll do is I'll record me on YouTube, uh, recording the podcast so you guys get the visual on YouTube, but also you can listen to it where uh, podcasts are available. But that is later. But I wanted to get the stuff out and start rolling right now. I wanted to get stuff back for you guys. And today is the start of Troy's Thursday Talks on YouTube in a uh, longer, little more in-depth podcast type of listen. Uh, this I'm actually entitled this episode one, The History of Us, U dot S for United States, obviously. Um but yeah, so this is my, this is officially my first my first try at something a little different. You know, when I I thought of the podcast idea because when I was doing my videos, uh, the first batch of videos I did a few weeks ago for you guys, I found myself trying to be much more. I don't want to use the word professional, but I had this image of what I want to be for YouTube, and I realized I needed to be more of myself. I need to be Troy. That's what makes me me, and. I decided if if I have a, a podcast type of format, I can kind of just speak and go and not really worry about trying so hard to entertain, if you will, and just be me, and it will come off more natural. So that's why I've been thinking about this for a little for a couple weeks now, and um, I don't know, just you know, it just hit me recently, and I've decided that it's time to you know give it a, give it a shot, and, and you know let's let's put it out there. So again, uh, this is Troy's Thursday Talks here on King Lister TV. This is episode one, the history of us. And I'll explain why I told that in a little bit. So 
let's get right into it. Yesterday, I was scrolling through Facebook, and I saw an article that was entitled uh, "Lack of Lack of Amer Lack of Interest in the U.S. Civil War," and I saw it, and I, you know, clicked on it right away, and I read this article, and the article really did a lot to me. It really made me think about a couple of different things I, and I had really mixed emotions on the article and uh, I'll explain to you why I had mixed emotions. The article was written by uh, written by a man named John Daniel Davidson. He writes for The Federalist. The Federalist is a right-winged, um, I don't want to say news platform, but, but a magazine, a online article type of source um, that was launched in 2013. If you don't know what right wing means, right wing means conservative. So they, you know, they um, tend to have a lot more, obviously, conservative views and and so on and so forth. So, you know, but I read the article because it was an interesting read. I, I love history. History is absolutely one of my favorite, favorite, favorite subjects uh, always in school. And I've always, I just love, I love history. I love learning about it. I love reading about history. I've always done well in history classes. So I read it because naturally the history subject kind of enticed me and it made me want to listen to it or read it. And I read it. And basically the article goes on to state how there is less interest in the Civil War and American history in general than there was, you know, 30, 40 years ago. It even states some numbers uh, that the Wall Street Journal did that said, only 3.1 million people visited the five major um, Civil War sites in 2018. Um, that's down from 10.2 million as far back as 1970. So think about that. In a, over the span of, what, 48 years, it's dropped down by over 7 million. I believe they said Gettysburg had less than a million visitors in 2018, which is... I think they said 13% of the total visitors that you saw in 1970. So obviously, uh, the, the the attraction of the Civil War has seemed to lose a little bit of luster. And the article starts to kind of go into reasons of what why they think that. They also uh, make the mention that there are less and less reenactors coming out every year to do it. You know, reenactors are a big part of these sites. They go there and they reenact these battles from the Civil War and they give you a historical breakdown. I have actually been to a reenactment before. I used to, random story real quick, I used to be uh, a member of the Big Brother Big Sister program of the Lehigh Valley. I was a little brother. I was, when I was 12 till the time I was 18, I uh, used to hang out with this guy named Phil. He was my big brother in the program, and we did plenty of stuff. You know, Sixers games, we just hung out and went to the mall, saw movies, etc., etc. Anyways, he had a brother, uh, a real brother, who was a Civil War, Civil War reenactor for at Gettysburg. And we went out to Gettysburg, and we um, we, we saw uh, a reenactment. We did a tour. It was, it was a fun time. I got to shoot a musket. It was a good time. I really enjoyed history, so I really, really enjoyed that. It was good. Um, but the, so the article is saying that, you know, reenactors are, are, are less and less coming out. You know, they can't get people, no young men want to step up and fill the spots that the older generation is now trying to pass to them. And in the article, in the article, it says something along the lines of that, you know, young kids don't have respect for history. And the guy goes, you know, to say it's not just that young the youth don't have respect for history, but also that they're being taught in American history that revolves around slavery, genocide, uh, bigotry, and greed. And it then this the article at this point kind of turns into the best way to describe it is conservative propaganda. It, it really it really shifts. The first few paragraphs of the article are about history and about you know, the numbers and how it's less and less. And then it starts to kind of go into why it is and what they think that means. And they, it, it really starts to kind of harp on uh, a political agenda, if you will. And, and that, that's where I kind of, that's where the line split for me. And I became very conflicted with the article. And I just had all these thoughts about 
not just history in general, but our history, American history, the history of us, if you will. And I just started thinking about it. And, you know, some of the things that he wrote in the article that I kind of wanted to, I don't want to say respond to because who am I? He probably won't see or hear this. But in, in my words, get my thoughts out about this topic and about what I think we can do to make history more appealing to everyone again. And um, so, yeah, that, that's that it was it was a it was an interesting read. It was very well written. I'll give him that. And it, it definitely made me it, definitely, it definitely was thought provoking. So it did its job to make me think. So with that being said, um, you know, these are these are my thoughts on the article. First and foremost, let me say this to clarify. I love the fact that I'm an American. I love having been having been born here. I was born in Pennsylvania, lived here my whole life. I, you know, I stand, you know, for the you know anthem when I go to a sporting event, and I get chills when people hit those notes at the end of the national anthem. I do. I, it's it's just who I am. Um, I will say though that, <laughs> and without trying to make anybody angry i do think that america the country america the people america the society we need to understand that not everything in our past is good or not everything in our past is glory not everything in our past has been righteous we've made a lot of mistakes i say we because i'm speaking as america We've made plenty of mistakes along the way. If you think about it, the history of the United States is is, is fairly small. Uh, it's not even we're not even a country that's two hundred and fifty years old yet. Think about that. We haven't even hit a quarter of a uh, a quarter of a of a century. Um, you know, two hundred fifty. You know, not even two hundred fifty years. You know, you think you know nineteen seven or seven sorry seventeen seventy six. The the uh, bicentennial was in. 1976 so in 2026 will officially hit 250 years so you know we're a very young country and the, and the amount of time that we've been around we've done uh, we've done a lot we really have done a lot good and bad you know you think about you know winning our independence from britain you know and you know, obviously the civil war and then the great war which is world war one and then world war two and all the wars you know the the you know Korean War, Vietnam, you know the war, the Vietnam War, the Gulf War, you know the war of Afghanistan. You know we've we've done so much through the history of the world to really shape it that it's we have it's such an important history to me. Uh, the world history of the world is very important, but I do think American history should be taught, especially to to kids who are born in this country. I think it's very important for us to learn history because history is set up to exist to not let us make the same mistakes we made before. We've made mistakes in the past and history is there to remind us of what we've done in the past that is a mistake and why we should not make it again. You know, in the article, the uh, Mr. Mr. Davidson makes the point that you know, hist historical ignorance is very dangerous. He makes the, but he's 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 arguing that, you know, um, he's you know the the uh, he's seen certain he 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 pinpointing examples of segregation and places that are trying more and more to segregate uh, different communities. He mentioned about a, a school that was having a um, a graduation that was just for the LGBT community and stuff like that. And I, I, I agree to his point that historical ignorance is a, a, a huge factor and something we should try to avoid, but I don't think that he went about it the right way. I, I disagree with his with his thoughts. I think that historical ignorance is important because we cannot ignore what we've done as a country in the past. And I don't want to turn this to a white and black thing because that's honestly a whole nother conversation for a whole nother time. You know, but if anybody who does, knows me personally, if you don't know me personally and you're someone watching this on YouTube for the first time or listening to this, I am a mixed man. I am I have a Italian Irish mother 
and my father has African American descent. So, you know, I, I see both sides of the, of the coin, if you will. And I think that history, our history is so complex and so, just so fascinating to me. You know, you grow up and you hear the stories of George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and Abraham Lincoln and all these, you know, founding fathers and heroes of the American culture. And you're thinking to yourself, like, wow, man, like, great guys and, you know, the, the, the reason why we're here and, you know, you, you, all this stuff. And even Columbus, you know, uh, who had nothing to do with America, number one. I mean, the man was Italian, but sailed for Spain and he was looking for India and he ended up in the Caribbean. Um, and he gets credited with founding, founding the New World, which he did. He, he, he did. He, he, he did have the, the uh, courage enough to try something different instead of going down the coastline of africa and being hit by pirates he decided to try to go across the ocean and he found land he didn't find who he was looking for but he did find new land land that they did not know about in europe at the time um but to sit here and say that christopher columbus is a good man would be a lie a bold lie if you will so I don't, I don't want to get caught up with Christopher Columbus. That's not really what I'm here for. I'm, I'm going to try to keep this concise on American history, specifically the Civil War. The Civil War was fought for for two for main reason was was states' rights. That's the, that's the main reason. the The North was getting much more um, power than the South, despite the fact that the South was bigger at the time, vast and and. Uh, I think in land and and and, and uh, production, but the, the North was going through a, a revolution, if you will, um, and they were gaining the power for the country, and the South did not like it. And you know, there's obviously you know uh, the Compromise of 1850, you know, which was the the Compromise of every new state, one 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 slave, one free. So you know, it's about state rights, but it comes down to slavery. Slavery was a state right that the South was fighting for, and they felt that Abraham Lincoln was going to come in and take that away, and they started one by one succeeding from the United States. Which brings me to my, this point that the guy makes in the article. Uh, he, he argues in the article that he blames nobody wanting to learn history on the fact that we're, we, we want to completely block it out. And he mentions the fact that, you know, Confederate statues of soldiers and generals or Confederate, you know, streets that are named after Confederate generals and and so on and so forth about how people want to remove them and how he thinks he's against that because that's, we're not going to learn history that way. I disagree. I do believe that statues of people should not have to live in a town where a Confederate flag is flown as one of the city's flags or a state flag or there should be statues of Robert E. Lee in someone's, you know, downtown circle. That's not, that's not, that's not, it's not right. And he fought on the wrong side. I understand that it's a part of our history and I agree with that. And I do agree that, you know, if you want to take the statue and put it into a museum, if there is a say a civil war museum or you want to open up a civil war museum and you want to put these statues and things of that nature in the museum fine that's i i am all about people learning history but i don't think we need statues are set up in and to praise someone to honor someone so i understand the point of why would you want to honor or praise someone who you know who probably owned slaves and who fought to keep slaves. You understand what I'm saying? It doesn't make any sense. So I, I don't understand his argument of, of that how that is to blame. I think that, but he, he did make a point too that some schools are even now skipping over teaching slavery and yada, yada, yada. I don't agree with that either. I think that we need to find this middle ground, okay? People need to, one, stop trying to baby everything. We need to be more honest about our history, and we need to tell it all. And that includes 
you know, what, what we did to the Native Americans, what we did to the African slaves, what we did to, you know, around the world. You know, even as far as, you know, in World War II, when we dropped the atomic bombs in Japan, I remember when people, when Obama went to, President Obama went to Japan to apologize to the the Japanese for dropping bombs that he didn't drop, you know, back in 1945, and people were up in arms. Why are you apologizing to them? They bombed us, and blah, blah, blah. Look, dropping an atomic bomb is something serious. We killed plenty and plenty of innocent, innocent lives. And, you know, this idea of, you know, we always, America has this idea of we have to be the good guy. We have to be the, the world's police. We have to be in the right all the time. And I don't... I'm not saying that the men who made these decisions made them with hate or evil in their heart. But they weren't good decisions. Specifically, I'm, I'm talking about the, 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 the atomic bomb. Now, if you you know this, the, to keep slavery, I think you might have to have a little bit of hate in your heart because you're trying to oppress a people, you're trying to oppress a race. So that's not that's not right. There's there's no good in that at all, you know. Um, but in the act of war, I was talking about the atomic bombs in, in in World War II. We dropped two nukes on Japan, not one, but two. That's not that's not bombing a naval base with with uh, kamikaze bombers. No, that's. As dropping two nuclear bombs in two cities and wiping out a lot of people, a lot of people, and that's not good. If if, if just imagine for a second that any other country would have dropped a new, imagine if Germany would have dropped a nuclear bomb somewhere, a nuclear bomb on France or a nuclear bomb on England or any of the other ally states or countries. Excuse me. Imagine how we would look at that in history. It wouldn't be. We wouldn't look at it good. But for us, for some reason, we have we make it seem like oh, well, we did the right thing. It wasn't the right thing, and that is all. A lot of our history, a lot of the things we did weren't the right thing. The Confederacy was not right. The Confederacy was never right. For people who argue that that's American history, that's American culture, succeeding from the Union is about the most un-American thing you can do. It is. It, think about it. You and this is this is to the people who might be on the right side of the argument. When you hear people complain that Donald Trump is not their president, what do you call them? You call them crybabies, you call them snowflakes. Literally, in the eighteen sixties, when Abraham Lincoln got elected, states succeeded, they left. They're the original snowflakes. They 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 were gonna miss slavery so bad that they left their country. So that argument to me is 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 invalid. You you can't use that this is a this is American culture. It's not American culture. It's not. It's part of American history. Yes. It should it be taught. Yes. Should it be praised? No. You don't need to have the Confederate flags, the Confederate statues, in your city's circle. In your city's flag, you don't need to have streets named after Robert E. Lee or any of those other generals. But now, if you want to have that in a in a museum where you tell the story of the Civil War, I understand that because history is important. History should be taught, all of it, the good, the bad, all of it. America is a country made up of people, and last time I checked, no person walking this earth is perfect. We all have done good. We all have probably done bad. We make decisions. Every day, right or wrong, you have to live with them. But you have to own up to them too, especially the ones you, the, your your wrong mistakes. You have to own up to it. You have to face facts. You have to stare in the eye, and just own it. And I think America, as a whole, needs to own its past. This idea that that we, that, you know, our country doesn't have a deep system, systemic history of racism. It's laughable. It's laughable. And just just try to talk to anybody about race. Race is extremely hard to talk to people about. I'm sure people watch this video probably stopped watching 20 minutes ago or are probably getting pissed off the more and more they watch it because people don't want to hear about race. It's hard to talk about. 
Some people don't care about it. They ignore it. Fine, whatever. That's your that's your prerogative. Everybody has an opinion. Okay. It's it's our it's it's our human and I think everybody should have an opinion. You know, it's it's our human right to have an opinion. I, I do believe that we all should have opinions. Problem now is in 2019 with the internet, like I'm using right now, YouTube, everybody can have a voice. And not everybody should have a voice. Or let me rephrase. People aren't using their voice for the right things. So I read this article yesterday. And I'm thinking about all this stuff. I'm thinking about the history of our of our country, the good and the bad, the things we've done. You know, you think about, you know, Andrew Jackson being president and and what he did to the Native Americans. I mean, what you know, what we did to the Native Americans, what we continue to do to Native Americans is is crazy, you know. Um, and I just think I just I started thinking about all this stuff, and I'm like, man, his, our history is so complex, man. It's so it's so deep, and it's so. And there's so many, you know, and I, I, I don't want to sound like this, this ungrateful person, you know, the uh, ignorant millennial, if you will, because I'm not. I, I, I truly appreciate the country I was born in. There's parts, there's places in the world where you do not want to live at all, at all. I, I remember people say they're going to move to that country. Good luck, man. Good luck. Now, is our country the best in the world anymore? I don't know. That's a conversation for another day. I'm not, I don't want to break down the economics of this country and every other country in the world and get into that. That's not what I'm here for right now. But do I think that being born here, I have opportunities that some people born in other countries don't won't ever have? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. The fact I can I can make a video, put it up on YouTube, and I can criticize Donald Trump all day long if I wanted to, and I don't have to worry about it. What's nothing's going to happen? Unless I don't threaten to do anything crazy, it's cool. There's places in the world where you can't even criticize the leaders of your village, let alone your country. You know, so you know we have to we have to take you know things with a grain of salt a little bit and and really you know just step back and look at things. You know, look at look try to look through someone else's eyes for a change and really think deeply about stuff. You know, it's 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 okay to to be intellectual in, intellectual and, and really think about things instead of all the time you know trying to be funny and 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 not have any substance to you and i just think that our 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 society especially my generation we're losing that that um the the willingness to push back if you will the um we're losing substance. I think we're losing heart. And I think that this article to me, not not people not wanting to learn our history, to me is, is kind of sad. Because to me, you know, we have to look at our history, you know, you know, from start to finish, from from the you know, pilgrims coming over to you know to as far back as Columbia, you know, everything, all of it together, man. All the way up to the you know, the Revolution War, the Civil War, and everything after the Civil War, you know, Reconstruction and the Industrial Revolution and you know, the turn of the, uh, into the, you know, the, uh, 20th century, you know, it's just so much stuff, man, and, and it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's a bit, I mean, we have a hard time getting my thoughts out right now, because I'm so back and forth on it, you know, I just, I just, my whole point to this was, I just want to tell you guys, I love history, and that I think people should really, you know, uh, not take our history for granted, you know what I mean, stop trying so hard to be so, anti-america you know be american love your country learn about your country all of it the good the bad face it the good and bad own it the good and bad take it all into account and really you know let's try you know let's try to make a better world and i think how we do that is you look at the past you look at history and you accept it for what it is you acknowledge it you know who the Good guys, well, I don't say good guys, bad guys, but who did right, who did wrong. You know, no more, you know, no more, you know. It, we have to stop painting these pretty pictures for people, you know. I think that, you know, there's, it's it's just so, we're so split that it's either, you know, no one wants to see the shades of gray in our history. And I think that, you know, if, for me personally, for in, for schools, I think that they should start really, going deeper with history and really showing kids from the beginning what was going on and not just painting these, you know, 
these pretty pictures of Christopher Columbus and these guys like that, you know, really showing you what happened in our history. So people are well informed, knowledgeable about what's happened, and you can look at the history of our country as a whole. We've come a long way. We have come a long way. But we still have a long way to go. We still have a long way to go. I don't think by any means we are we are the America that people think we are. I don't, I don't believe it. I think we have the potential, the possibility. I think that my generation has the, the, the tools to to really do something with the world and it just matters if you if you want to or not. That's it. If you really want to do something with it or not. That's all I can say. Um I've rambled off for about thirty minutes now and I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up because I've gone on longer than I wanted to. I wanted to keep these around twenty to twenty five minutes. But again, this is gonna be more of a podcast style where it's just kind of me talking and hopefully you guys listening. I, I, I don't know if anybody's made it all the way through but if you had, man, I appreciate you. Even if you haven't made it, man, and you had to watch it in multiple parts or over multiple days, I just appreciate anybody who's who stuck around, man, who who subscribed to me before, um, who subscribed to me, you know, who might subscribe to me now, whatever. I'm just really thankful for you guys listening to me, giving me this opportunity to even just talk. And I just wanted to get it off my chest. I just want people to know that, like, it's okay to be proud to be an American. It's okay for you to be proud to be American, but yet still know America has done wrong and that America needs to do better. There's nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong with that. You can love your country and still want your country to be better. You don't have to be, it's like it's like the idea of if, if you're if you're pro-black, you have to be anti-white. That's not, it doesn't have to be that. It doesn't have to be that. It doesn't have to be that. We have to learn how to be more can't think of the word right now but we just have to we have to try a little harder a little better so you know in uh in essence man uh the the uh the article i, I did share on my facebook my facebook page if anybody's friends with me on facebook and you want to check out the article it's on my page um it's a decent article like i said i it was a good read and it was really thought-provoking you know like, uh, obviously again i i you know I, I tend to disagree with a lot of the things the guy was you know, his propaganda he was trying to spiel but I do think that um, overall, it's sad that sad that people are not interested in history anymore. Very, very sad. Uh, and I hope that I hope that people start giving history a chance and really looking at our history and really analyzing it deeper. And even if you look into it for yourself, man, you know, read a books, read some books on history, read some articles online, do what you got to do to to know what you know, know your history and really look into it. But other than that, guys, man, I, I'm going it's going on way too long. But um, coming up next, there will be a episode two. It'll be on Batman and the future of the DC films. So, all right, guys, thank you for joining, and I'll catch you later. Peace.